Hello, a warm welcome to you from SGT University. I am Dr. Nima Preet from Faculty of Medicine and Health Sciences. Today we will be learning about Neuromuscular Junction. Neuromuscular Junction Before going into the details of Neuromuscular Junction, I will brief about the various terminologies which you will come across the topic. So what is Neuromuscular Junction? It is a synapse between the motor neuron and the muscle fiber. What are motor neurons? Motor neurons, they are the nerves which are innervating the muscle fiber. Now what is a motor unit? So single motor neuron and the muscle fiber that it innervates that is known as the motor unit. So Neuromuscular junction is a specialized synapse between the motor neuron and the muscle fiber. It occurs at a structure on the muscle fiber called as the motor end plate. Normally, it is one per fiber. So, what is synaptic trough? Synaptic trough is being shown by a black demarcation. So it is an invagination in the motor end plate membrane. What is a synaptic cleft? So synaptic cleft is 20 to 30 nanometers wide. It contains large quantities of acetylcholine esterase. Now another terminology that is the subneural clefts. So it is shown with the black dark lining, the subneural clefts, they are present over here and the function of the subneural clefts is increasing the surface area of the postsynaptic membrane. So, exon terminal is enlarged into a knob-like structure known as the terminal button which fits into the shallow depression in the underlying muscle fiber. So, synaptic vesicles are formed from the budding Golgi apparatus. They are transmitted to the nerve terminal by axonal streaming. Acetylcholine is formed in the cytoplasm and is transported into the vesicles. So these acetylcholine filled vesicles occasionally fuse with the presynaptic membrane and lead to the release of the contents that is acetylcholine known as exocytosis. This causes miniature end plate potential in the post synaptic membrane. So action potential begins in the ventral horn of the spinal cord. Local depolarization opens the voltage-gated calcium channels. When the voltage-gated calcium channels open up, that increases the cytosolic calcium ions that triggers the fusion of 125 vesicles with the presynaptic membrane and lead to the release of acetylcholine that is the exocytosis of acetylcholine. So, Calcium channels, they are localized around the linear structures on the presynaptic membrane known as dense bars. So acetylcholine receptors are present at the top of the subneural cleft while voltage-gated sodium channels, they are present in the bottom half of the subneural cleft. After having a brief outlook of neuromuscular junction anatomy, let's discuss about the steps involved in neuromuscular transmission. What are the sequence of events that are occurring? First is the action potential when it arrives at the presynaptic membrane that opens the voltage-gated calcium channels. When the voltage-gated calcium channels open up, that leads to the release of the acetylcholine 
from the synaptic vesicle into the synaptic cleft. So acetylcholine travels across the synaptic cleft to the post-synaptic membrane known as the motor end plate. So action potential triggers the opening of calcium channels leading to the influx of acetylcholine into the synaptic cleft. Acetylcholine molecules combine with the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor so when it binds that leads to the opening of the voltage gated sodium channels. So how the end plate potential and the action potential generation occur? At the motor end plate acetylcholine released into the neuromuscular junction binds to and opens the nicotinic acetylcholine receptor channels on the muscle fiber especially the sodium channels. When there is opening of nicotinic acetylcholine receptor channel that produces end plate potential which will normally initiate into the action potential if the local spread is sufficient to open the voltage gated sodium channels. So end plate potential development that is a local non-propagated potential which does not obey all or none law while action potential that is not a local potential it obeys all or none law. So now let's study about the neuromuscular junction through animation. So the action potential is carried as sodium ions down the axon of motor neuron. When the sodium ions reach the axon terminal, this triggers the opening of voltage gated calcium channels. When these channels open up, calcium floods into the axonal stream. The presence of calcium in the axonal terminal triggers the release of the synaptic vesicle from the docking site. Then the synaptic vesicle fuses with the presynaptic membrane. That will lead to the release of neurotransmitter which is an acetylcholine. Acetylcholine, once released, passively diffuses across the synaptic cleft. These molecules then bind to the nicotinic acetylcholine receptors which are located on the muscle fiber. They are ligand gated sodium channels. When the acetylcholine binds to these receptors, these ion channels open up and sodium floods down into the muscle fiber. Sodium is positively charged ion so addition of sodium ion causes depolarization. If enough depolarization then nearby voltage gated sodium channels do open, leading to further influx of the sodium ions. This is how the neuromuscular transmission occurs. Now we'll explore about the drugs affecting the end plate potential. The drugs that affect the end plate potential are divided into two categories. One is the inhibitor group of drugs, other is the stimulant group of drugs. So let's study about inhibitors first. So this is a normal action potential. Inhibitor group of drugs, they are of two types. First is Curariform group of drugs. This, when the curariform group of drugs, they are acting on the neuromuscular junction. So they block the nicotinic acetylcholine channels by competing for acetylcholine binding site. This reduces the amplitude of end plate potential. When the amplitude of end plate potential that is being reduced, so there is no generation of the action potential. Then comes the botulinum toxin. 
botulinum toxin decreases the release of acetylcholine from the nerve. When there is decrease in the release of the acetylcholine from the nerve, that leads to the insufficient stimulus to initiate an action potential. Other group of drugs that are the stimulant group of drugs, they are divided as acetylcholine-like drugs, which include methacholine, carbacol, and nicotine. They bind and activate the nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. So these drugs, they are not destroyed by acetylcholine estrous enzyme and so they have prolonged effect. Then anti-acetylcholine estrous enzyme that is neostigmine and physostigmine. They block the degradation of acetylcholine and lead to the prolongation of effect. As we have studied about the neuromuscular junction physiology, anatomy, let's study the applied aspects of autoimmune diseases. So let's talk about myasthenia gravis. Myasthenia gravis. The incidence of myasthenia gravis is 1 in 10,000 to 1 in 30,000. Women in the age group of 20 to 30 years of age, they are affected. Men more than 60 years of age, they are affected. It is an acquired chronic autoimmune disorder and the hallmark of myasthenia gravis is weakness and rapid exhaustion of skeletal muscle. Myasthenia gravis. Myasthenia means related to muscle. And gravis means grave. So it is a disease which is being related to muscle. Myasthenia gravis is an autoimmune disorder where our own immune system which works like defense system is against our body. When it is against our body that can be dangerous. So the initial symptoms of myasthenia gravis include drooping of eyelids, severe muscle pain and in the long run muscular atrophy. If the muscles associated with the breathing are affected by the disease, it could be life threatening. You can see in this diagram how the breathing muscles they get affected. Just take a look at the neuromuscular junction which is a key center of incidence in case of myasthenia gravi. In this diagram we see the biceps muscle. Neuromuscular junction is the junction between the nerve and the muscle cell as we have already studied. Inside the muscle cell there are sarcomeres that are contracting or expanding. When a stimulus comes or want to move the muscle, the nerves they are firing and as a result the acetylcholine receptors on the muscle that is allowing the cationic influx inside the muscle and that allows the sarcomeres to cause the shortening of the length when the acetylcholine receptors on the muscle that allows the cationic influx that leads to the contraction of the sarcomeres and that leads to shortening of that. So then when it reaches the nerve terminal that would create a post synaptic potential. When there is the post synaptic potential that leads to the influx of calcium ions from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. In the neuromuscular junction blue is the neuron which is being shown over here. Acetylcholine that is secreted and acetylcholine binds to the acetylcholine receptors. Nicotinic acetylcholine receptors, they are cation channels which allow the cationic influx into the muscle. This generates the postsynaptic potential in the muscle. The orange shown over here is the muscle. In myasthenia gravis, there are specific type of subtype of B cells which differentiate into antibody producing plasma cells and these antibodies 
they are specific to acetylcholine receptors. These antibodies bind to the acetylcholine receptors which inhibit or prevents the ligand receptors. That means the acetylcholine will not bind and the muscle contraction will not happen. So this is how the path, this is the pathophysiology of myasthenia gravis. Now let's see what all you have gained from today's talk. So we'll be discussing about the various terms. So what is a motor unit? It is motor neuron, exon terminal and the muscle fibers they form the motor unit. What is a presynaptic membrane? Membrane of the nerve ending is a presynaptic membrane. Postsynaptic membrane. Membrane of the muscle fiber is the postsynaptic membrane. End plate potential. Localized, non propagated, and that does not obey all or none law that is the end plate potential. Quantile release. Process of release of one vesicle of acetylcholine. So today we learnt about neuromuscular junction, its physiology and applied aspects. So next time we meet, we'll explore skeletal muscle and its contraction. So till then, keep learning, keep growing. See you next time.